It flowed. It was just so easy. It was happy. It flowed because she let him navigate where it went. He picked the toy. He picked the quantity of food they were going to eat. She kind of tried to stay on pool, but he said no. He said, well, I've room for more water. And did you notice that she did wait? Like, he was trying to get some words out, and she gave him that wait time. Didn't rush him. She was letting him figure out what he wanted to say. And she even prompted the play, do you want to have a play? And then he was like, oh, yeah, but she wasn't forcing it um, like it was his turn. So when we get with deposits, we just need to keep in mind how our deposits can change when things don't go exactly as we plan. If the kid isn't responding to your attention, what if they have special needs and they can't hear or see? What if they were blind? How would we make these changes? If they have a limited physical mobility, we've had a lot of students where they don't, they don't walk or crawl or they're in some sort of um, apparatus that they need to move around with. with. If they have some sort of serious medical concerns, we need to keep that in mind when we're making those deposits and making sure that we are making deposits and we're making deposits at the same rate that we're making them for the other kids. And when we're using that feedback, it's contingent on appropriate behavior like we've been talking about. And you use descriptive language. Good girl, good boy, things like that. What does that mean and how would a child know what it is to replicate it? You did a good job. What, what did they do that was good? Did you like that that little girl sat at the table finally? You, you sat for a whole minute or um, you used your pencil. Whatever you want them to do again, praise it so that they make a mental note. Oh, she liked it when I used my walking feet in the hall. Um, Nonverbals, people forget about these all the time. Thumbs up, a wink, you know, just letting them know, I saw you making a really great choice. Nice job. A high five. You don't, we don't have to be talking all the time. Individualize the feedback so it's based on the children's needs and preferences. If you've got, you guys especially, have these huge ranges of ages and you have to modify that feedback. So what's appropriate for a baby, you have to modify for the older kids. And encourage the adults um, and peers to do it too. Help those families learn these skills. It doesn't come naturally to them and, or everyone. And so we need to practice it and giving them tools so that they can recognize it by modeling it and telling them when they pick up what a great job. You're kind of planting the seed and showing them how to do it. <clears throat> so the research just really shows that praise and that positive reinforcement is really what's going to teach kids what they need to know. Um, it's going to systematically reduce the need to reinforce these behaviors. You know when you feel like you're constantly saying the same thing over and over again? This is going to eliminate that because you're getting them, you're training them in a positive way to do what they need to do, and you don't have to keep reminding them. Then the feedback should always be focused on effort. They don't have to master it, we just have to recognize that they're trying. They're making the first step. And then we praise them and encourage them to the next baby step in that process. It's all a, a process. And that positive reinforcement strengthens the behaviors so the kids who get it are popular with their peers. And it's especially important for the kids with challenging behaviors because they have the tendency to be unpopular with their peers. So by us putting that praise on, we're modeling for all the other kids in the room that this is a good person, look how hard they're working, aren't they doing a great job? And it changes the whole light in which the peers are perceiving those kids. And the benefits are they're socially, emotionally going to be strong. Cognitively, they're going to be in a place to learn. Socially, they're going to be where they should be. They're going to have, be able to have those relationships with adults and their peers. It's going to dramatically reduce the frequency of challenging behavior. They're going to have a, re a really awesome self-esteem. And they're going to want to engage with you even more, which means you're going to be able to teach them and do with them even more than you have been doing. All bonuses. So the major messages are those relationships are critical. We just talked about the baby. We've got to engage in it. 
The adults need to be aware of their hot buttons because we have to make the adjustment. It's not the kid's job. Communication is key and we've got to be very mindful of the words we choose and when we choose them. And providing that positive attention and acknowledgement is proven to be an effective strategy for social emotional development. You will be creating little social emotional rock stars, um, one deposit at a time. And it really is remarkable when you see the changes just from shifting your language just that little bit. So, um, I know we're running late, so I'll, if you, you're welcome to take your thought seeds and do that at a different time if you like. I would like to pass out the evaluation if you'll take time to do that. Um, the next session will be on en engaging with families, partnering with families, so it's a really nice tie into this piece because you start feeling like you're doing a great job and then you want to spread the word to how can you do it. And you can all put your little piggies up this week and see if there's any uh it funny when you're talking about using words that are on their level because I was I think I was just exhausted on Friday when we were doing our safari the 